Hi, I'm Jason Hommel, and I'll be reading from the book The Copper Revolution. Chapter 10. Copper at 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams does not harm the liver. Olivares. Studies on taking 10 milligrams of copper to 20 milligrams of copper show zero harm, specifically no liver damage. The title of the study is Supplementing copper at the upper level of the adult dietary recommended intake induces detectable but transient changes in healthy adults. Olivares, 2005. Note, they call copper at 10 to 20 milligrams mild copper excess. The abstract says the health consequences of mild copper excess in humans are unknown. In a previous study, two months of supplementation with up to 6 milligrams of copper per liter in drinking water did not induce detectable changes. Here we assessed a copper supplement at the upper level of dietary recommendations for healthy adults. The study was a prospective controlled trial. Participants, women and men, 18 to 50 years old, represented the upper and lower 5% of the cereloplasmin distribution curve obtained from a community-based sample of 800 healthy adults. N equals 41 per group, each approximately 50% men. Individuals received a daily dose of 10 milligrams of copper for 60 days. Before and after supplementation, blood, Copper, cereloplasmin, protein, homocysteine, liver amino transferases, copper zinc superoxide dismutase activity in erythrocytes, ESOD, and glutathione in peripheral mononuclear cells and urine, copper excretion after five hour administration of a chelator, 2 3 dimer capto 1 propano sodium sulfonate DMPS analysis were performed. These sentences in studies, I tell you. So look, um, if you click on the link below the study, you can follow along and read that sentence yourself in the uh, scientific study in the book. Uh, after two months, liver enzyme activities remained below the clinical cutoff value used to diagnose liver dysfunction, but had increased significantly in both groups and genders. These increases were no longer present 12 months after the copper loading period was completed. Glutathione in mononuclear cells, m mole grams of protein, also increased after the two-month copper loading in both groups and in both genders. P equals 0.01. ESOD activity, serum homocysteine concentration, and urinary copper excretion five hours after DMPS administration were not affected. We conclude that copper administered as described induced a transient, mild, but significant elevation of amino transferases. Quote, in a previous study, two months of copper of supplementation with up to six milligrams of copper per liter in drinking water did not induce detectable changes. Here we assessed a copper supplement at the upper level of dietary recommendations for healthy adults. I pulled that last quote out, uh, quoting it twice, and I mention it here for greater effect. Six milligrams of copper for two months did not induce detectable changes. In other words, six milligrams is not dangerous. It's also probably not enough to get you healthy either. If you're taking copper, you are going to want positive changes, not, quote, no detectable changes. In other words, six milligrams of copper does nothing. Again, 2.6 milligrams of copper does not fix deficiency. And six milligrams of copper does nothing. Therefore, for me, this confirms that people need higher levels to get good results from taking copper. Quote, individuals received a single daily dose of 10 milligrams of copper for 60 days. Quote, there is scant knowledge of the early effects of chronic exposure to higher levels of copper. Quote, there is an anecdotal report of a 26-year-old man who required liver transplantation after self-administering 30 milligrams of copper daily for 30 months and then increasing the dose to 60 milligrams a day for one year as a, quote, performance enhancer. I cover this report in detail in chapters 40 and 41 in this book, On the Upper Limit. Quote, in a previous randomized controlled double-blind study, we exposed apparently healthy adults to up to 6 milligrams of copper per liter of water for two months. Based on the daily consumption of water, this represented exposures of up to 20 milligrams of copper per day. Copper was ingested at home during the day as plain water or taken as tea, herbal infusions, or soup. Under these conditions, traditional copper biomarkers, including serum copper, serum ceruloplasmin, uh, CP protein, and erythrocyte, zinc, uh, copper zinc superoxide dismutase, total activity ESOD, were not affected. Discussion. 
Presently, the WHO and the FAO, Inter International Atomic Energy Agency, and the National Academy of Science and Food and Nutrition Board, DRIs, for trace elements and metals are 9 and 10 milligrams of copper per day as the tolerable upper limit of intake from food, water, supplements, respectively, and supplements, respectively. The UL is not a precise estimate of safe chronic copper doses in humans. Rather, it is based on estimates derived from usual dietary exposure multiplied by a factor of 10, considered a reasonable default value in the absence of specific dose response evaluations. In other words, the upper limit is a random guess. And I go over that later in the future chapters. Quote, the main effect was a significant increase in the activities of three liver aminotransferases after two months of controlled copper exposure with the specified dose and regimen. This increase was significant, but all enzyme activities were below the corresponding clinical cutoff values used to diagnose liver dysfunction, and participants did not exhibit, did not exhibit symptoms or positive findings on physical examination suggestive of liver disease. Quote, DMPS, given at a dose that induced a dramatic difference in urinary copper excretion between the patients with Wilson's disease and normal volunteers in the preliminary protocol, did not significantly increase urinary copper in the study participants, the data not shown. The 300 milligrams of DMPS as a single dose is sufficient to chelate the metal when tissue concentrations are elevated, as observed in patients with, with Wilson's disease. This dose is currently recommended for individuals suspected of suffering from chronic metal toxicity, individuals with potential mercury toxicity due to mercury from dental fillings. In our case, we chose an oral DMPS dose that was well documented to be well tolerated by individuals suspected of mercury toxicity. The low dose, in addition to the rather moderate copper load given to our subjects, may explain the lack of an effect of DMPS on urinary copper excretion. Alternatively, uh, the chronic exposure to copper may have led to copper sequestration in body pools that were less accessible to the chelator. Either way, the point here is that uh, after giving people copper, they tried to uh, give people a chelator to see how much copper came out, and no copper came out uh, for whatever reasons. The gastro, so it, it kind of leads you to think that they didn't accumulate an extra excess burden of copper from 10 to 20 milligrams a day over two months in the study. Uh, gastrointestinal symptoms and blood indicators of copper load in apparently healthy adults undergoing controlled copper exposure is the title of the next study. Conclusions. Gastrointestinal symptoms increase significantly in response to 6 mg of copper per liter of water. No detectable changes were observed in indications of copper status, which suggests competent homeostatic regulation. The results of liver function tests remain normal in all subjects. Again, there was no liver problems in their 2003 study or in their 2005 study. Next study, 2001, titled Nausea Threshold and Apparently Healthy Individuals Who Drink Fluids Containing Graded Concentrations of Copper. Abstract. Ingestion of drinking water with a high copper content may induce acute gastrointestinal effects, mainly nausea and vomiting, rarely diarrhea and abdominal pain. The objectives of this study were to define nausea threshold in apparently healthy adult volunteers who received graded concentrations of copper and to explore how individual thresholds were modified by delivering copper in an orange flavored drink. 61 healthy subjects received 200 uh, milliliters of a copper containing solution in purified water at concentrations of 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 milligrams per liter as copper sulfate. Excuse me in random order. Speaking of nausea thresholds, I just uh, had 10 milligrams of copper before reading all this. Uh, but I'm fine. <clears throat> uh, nausea threshold concentration for first response was established, and then this threshold was confirmed. Subsequently, following the same design, subjects received the same copper concentrations, up to 12 milligrams per liter, delivered in an orange flavored drink starting at the confirmed threshold concentration found in water. Mild nausea shortly after ingestion of copper containing water was the most frequent finding, 33 out of 61 subjects, starting at 4 mg per liter. Vomiting was observed in 7 individuals starting at 6 mg per liter. 
The NOEL for copper in purified water was 2 and 4 milligrams per liter for nausea and vomiting, respectively. When copper was provided as an orange-flavored drink, 11 subjects, 18%, reported nausea, starting at 8 milligrams per, of copper per liter, and no subjects vomited, up to 12 mill milligrams copper per liter. Uh, it is concluded that after consumption of copper in purified water, the NOEL is 2 milligrams of copper per liter, and the LOAEL, 4 milligrams of copper per liter for nausea, while tolerable intake is between 2 and 4 milligrams of copper per liter in water depending on whether apparent or confirmed nausea is used as the criterion to define critical effects. Quote, Tolerable intake is between 2 and 4 milligrams of copper per liter in water depending on whether apparent or confirmed nausea is used as the criterion to define critical effects. And 5 to 15 milligrams of copper is safe. Another study. Copper Exposure and Potential Biomarkers of Copper Metabolism from Olivares in 2003. In adult healthy volunteers that had an estimated daily intake of 0.9 milligrams of copper per day, apparently, or approximately 15 uh, micrograms per kilogram per day, exposure to additional 50 to 60 micrograms of copper per kilogram per day for up to three months or up to 150 micrograms of copper per day for two months resulted in no significant changes of sod activity in erythrocytes, of copper concentration in serum erythrocytes and mononuclear cells, and of serum ceruloplasmin ANOVA. 5 to 15 milligrams of copper supplements a day for a healthy 100 kilogram person, 220 pounds, essentially does nothing. Because 50 micrograms times 100 kilograms uh, equals uh, 5 milligrams and 150 micrograms times 100 kilograms equals 15 milligrams. And that's it for chapter 11. Thanks.